Hello investors and welcome back to Just Randy Stocks. Last night I did a video and it was about EVs and at the end of the video I talked about Alibaba and how there is potential that it could be going down to gain support in the 150 range. Now this went down much lower to the 140 range, 143 to be exact. We'll take a look at the charts, but I want to go through an options play that I took advantage of this morning because I expect a recovery in this in the next quarter. I want to explain all of that during this video. So let's just not do a long intro and let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing is the earnings per share, the revenue miss, and the guidance all force this down much lower. Now the guidance was the biggest portion of this that I believe placed additional pressure on the stock going down. And let me explain what this means. If I was to borrow a hundred dollars from you and tell you that I was going to pay you back two hundred dollars next year and then I come back a couple of days later a couple of months later and as the time gets clo closer I tell you I'm going to give you a hundred fifty dollars back so you're still going to get your money back but you're only going to get a hundred fifty bucks then you know we're good friends you're probably going to be a little bit upset but you're still going to have your money back and an extra 50 bucks. So that's kind of the way that I look at this with the fiscal year 2022 revenue to grow 20 to 23%. They're taking a more conservative approach. You have to understand what's happening over there. Some of you might be like, you know what, China, not even, they, they won't even let things grow over there. I don't want to have anything to do with it. Some of you might need an opportunity like this or know that this is an opportunity to kind of double down and to cost average down. Some of you have probably already made that decision, but I just want to give you some comfort that, you know, I'm in this trade with you. And this previous consensus was uh, 800 basis points higher. So the consensus was much higher, but this company is still planning to grow and they are about to have what I believe is a record breaking quarter this next quarter q3 so i'm going to pull that up for you too now first off with an options play you got to get the timing right so i want to make sure you don't miss this right before it's reported so on q2 this is a little bit different so normally it's q3 this is q2 for them now november 18th is when they reported if you go down here to q3 the next timing is going to be in february so I want to talk about that timing on the options play, but for now, just remember that you want your options play for February of 2022. Now, why am I bullish on this? And I'm not telling you that this stock doesn't have room to go down further. It could go down further. I don't believe it will. That guidance update in this last quarter was a big shocker, and that could push this price down just a little bit further. It could be at the bottom, but let's talk about this article. Alibaba Singles Day posted record sales. Bloomberg, here's the numbers, November 11th. This is a global massive celebrity and online gaming event that involves shopping festival that happens every year around this previous timing in October. I think they started earlier this year, October 20th to 11-11 or November 11th. This even hit the news and caused the previous share price that is down now to go up. So the, the highs that we've seen before was just talking about this 11-11 event. And here you can see it says 84.5 billion was reported and it eclipsed last year's official tally of 498.2 billion won. Now just to let you know what that is in USD, I went ahead and converted it. It is 78 billion. So last year they did 78 billion. This year they did 84.5 billion. Now those numbers aren't going to go directly on the revenue. They're going to do some things with those numbers, but I put this in USD so that way you could I could walk this through with you and show you that Alibaba has been consistent not only with growth. Look, we're still talking about 20 to 23% year over year growth. So yes, it did come down some, but this is a value buy in my in my opinion. Now, this is strictly my opinion. Do what you want with your money. I'm just letting you know what I think. So let's take a look back here. Now, of course, this is the quarter that's reported, and you're not going to see it on here, but this is the one that we're looking forward to. So we're going to pay attention because we're, we're focused on the options play of February, but we're looking at December's number. So you can see 3, 4, 5, 7 for December, uh, 5, 7, 8, and then 12 for December. So just keep watching that number here. We've got uh, 12 with 17. So out of these quarters, I mean, it was reported much, much higher. 
If we go into 2019, you can see it was 23 versus previous quarters. And then in 2020, finally, this is the last data point that we're going to have. It was 33 compared to previous quarters. Now, this has got to fill in. And of course, I expect this next port to be on the upside. Now, let's take a look at the charts. I, I didn't know that they were going to adjust their guidance, but I'm not surprised due to all this regulation. Uh, so 150, it blew past that. There was some support previously back here. You can see in the 150 range, it looked like it was holding up, but when it did drop, it came back down here to where I drew a line in that I'll be watching of 142. Now, it looks to be doing okay here at 143, but I would not be surprised if this tried to revisit the 130 range. I think there's a lot more upside knowing that they're still planning to grow 20 to 23% next year than there is downside potential. So I think you have a small window on the downside, but you never know about sediment. This is a highly traded stock. It's one of the top 25 volume traded stocks. We'll take a look at that. So just know that this, I can't guarantee how far this is going to go down, but in the 30 minute time frame window, you can see it went down here to 143, gained some support. It had what looked like a pretty good recovery. People took some of those profits off the table, and then uh, there was some buyback in a little bit here to close out what looked like it was a green candle for the end of the day in the 30-minute chart. Now, you can make this look however you want. If you go into the day chart, it's just going to look completely red. So the, the day chart was just red, bad red, right? But you get the point here. Now, I drew a red line in as a sign of resistance. And I wanted to capture that because this is also going to play in to our options play. We don't want to go above 170 on our options play just to be conservative because they've adjusted guidance. We see these previous resistance lines here. So that's all going to go into how we're selecting our options play. So you want to make sure you find a good level of resistance. Now, this has been a highly traded stock. You can see millions and millions traded. 24 million is its typical average. It was at 60 million today. And the next thing I want to look at is, you know, not only was it traded, is it a highly volume traded stock in the top 25, I would say, but our puts and calls, you know, being selected for this. Now you can go in here and I've got this selected for the February timeframe because that's what we're going to be talking about. But there was so many people that had puts on this, betting on it going down. And it did. I, I thought it was going to go down. And this is just another indicator that you could say, where is general sediment? And you want to see those green numbers on the side that you're betting on. So just another tool to add to your toolkit. All right, so the first thing you want to do is you want to select the options button, and then you want to go to the date that we talked about. Now, you want to select February because you want to give yourself enough time. You don't want this to age and go down in price before you've had an opportunity to hit your strike price. What you're saying is that you believe this is going to go up, but you've got to give yourself some time so this doesn't time decay. Now you've got out of the money options that are up here above this line. This is your share price line right here. You can see the share is currently sitting at 142. So everything below that price is going to be 140. It's going to be more expensive and it's going to be less expensive up here above the line that is out of the money. So you want to select an out of the money play and you want to make sure that you don't go too far up because of the time decay. It has to be achievable. This is the lowest risk thing to do. These are risky plays. So I just want to make sure you understand that I wouldn't go any higher than 170. Now people could go all the way up here and you can see people are trading all of these. They're going to have high amounts of volume, but the time decay on these can be very tricky if you've never traded options. So if you're not an experienced options trader, you're looking to mitigate your risk, I would recommend doing 165. I would go with 170 even. This would be the highest I would go is 170. Now let me explain what you're going to see in here. And it's important to just open this up and take a look at the numbers and what they're doing, how they're trading when the market opens. Now with options, you don't get to trade this at 9 a.m. on Robinhood. You can't trade this earlier. You have to wait till 930. So the bid right here, bid and ask. The bid is someone has this bid at five ten or five hundred and ten dollars, and then we've got an ask of five thirty or five hundred and thirty dollars. Now that's the price. If you go to ask for this, you're gonna have to. If you want to own it right now, right this minute, 
you will have to select this and put the price in manually 530 or wait until someone fills your order at 520. You can see one person has this bid at 510. So there is potential that you could get that filled if you if you put in 510. You could put in whatever amount you want. Now, the what I like to do is I like to look at the mark and the high. I like to look at the previous close. Now, people that didn't get out of this trade and had this option yesterday just to show you this 11% drop was a 50% drop for an option. So this was $1,065 when it closed prior to it dropping and these are just estimates. This is approximation. Now it reached a low today of $460. Yeah, I know it says $4.60, but trust me, whenever you go to select this, that's exactly what it is. It's actually hundreds. So make sure you're paying attention to how volatile these could be. You could be on the downside of this or the upside. What I'm trying to do is get you on the upside. So instead of you collecting $30 because you get in on this play and maybe this goes to $170 by February or th then that's $30 gain, wouldn't you rather have a $500 upside and that's what options are all about, but they are highly volatile, very, very risky plays. Now the Delta, this is a 27% Delta, meaning this is the potential that this could actually happen. There's a 27% chance according to everything that's in here. There's good volume. You want to see volume. You don't want to see a zero here because you want to be able to trade this. You want to be able to put a, a uh, price in that someone else could buy this from you because that's how you get out of the trade is someone else offers to buy it at that purchase price. So you can see 1,620 volume on this and there's going to be different rates of volume on each of these. If I click on this one down here on 165, you can see it's 1430. And on Yahoo, it's actually going to tell you back here, it's going to tell you exactly how much volume traded in each of these. So you can just go and see which ones are the most popular and you can see, just like I was saying, 170 has a lot of trading volume. So I just select that one. And then down here on the put side, 150 was and 155 were the most traded. So if you're just curious and you don't want to go through it and click on all these, you can also also find that consolidated, those consolidated most popular ones there. And those are 10, those tend to be good ones to be in. You want to have a high volume trade because you want to make sure you don't have difficulty getting out of this. All right, so once you've selected it, you press this check mark and you want to select the 170, for example. You get to put your price in here. You want to go at the lowest price possible, or you might even want to go lower than this. And if it doesn't execute, you're fine with that, but you're not going to buy this at anything but the lowest price possible. You think it's going to go down further than 460. You want to watch the charts. So you manually put in your number. And here's the last piece that I want to exercise caution with is never buy multiple, don't spend all of your allocated spend on one contract and one contract price. This is just like shares, you want to cost average down. So you can see for one, this is 460. For two, this is going to cost me 920. For three, so on so forth, it's going to triple that number. And you just don't want to use all of your allocated spend. You want to, you want to wait. And if this goes down again into the high 130s, low 130s, you want to save some allocated spend to cost average down. So once you select a price it fills and you feel like it's going down further, just, just know that you can treat this just like a stock where you cost average into your position. And when you're ready to sell it, all you do is select your price, how many contracts you want to sell. You may just want to sell one, you may want to sell two or three. That's how it works. If you have any questions, let me know what those are in the comments below. You can find me on the Discord and you can sign up for the Patreon. That information is in the description below. That's all I got. I'll see you guys in the next video.